Nobody wants a heart attack or a stroke, and if we have thicker blood, we tend to increase our risk of getting a heart attack or a stroke. And on TV all the time we're seeing ads for taking Plavix and aspirin to prevent a heart attack. And now Pradaxa, all the new ones that are out. It's amazing the direct-to-consumer ads when it comes to this whole subject. And one of the things that just came out that's really serious is when doctors combine them and have you take like Plavix along with an aspirin mm. or Coumadin along with an aspirin because it can make you hemorrhage. And that's, we know all that, but the problem is, is the doctors are trying to do the best job they can to prevent that stroke. I mean, a stroke is a big deal. You get a stroke and you're paralyzed and you can't talk and you may not get a full recovery from it. You may not be able to see right or walk right or have balance. But That's you a can, big deal. But you can also have a hemorrhagic stroke. Indeed. So you can go from one extreme to the other, either from a clot that's blocking off those blood vessels, or you can hemorrhage and block them off. Well, 85 to 90 percent of strokes are clots. The other 5 or 10 percent are bleeds. The bleeds are definitely more difficult. And if you're on a drug, while you're one of these anticoagulants, when you have a bleed, it's lights out. And, and, we already, and we already know with aspirin, you just can take one baby aspirin and they do an endoscopy and it shows that you're already bleeding from just that. Well, if you take it for a, a period of time, there was a study done in the New England Journal of Medicine on people who had uh, 81 milligrams a day, which is a dose for a baby aspirin, and they were taking it to protect them from having heart attacks. And a year later, they went in and looked at them with endoscopy, and when they looked, 28% had a three millimeter okay, uh, size ulcer or bigger, and the rest of them were bleeding most of the time. So even aspirin is something that by itself is a major issue. And that's why it's not really recommended for people who have never had a heart attack before, even though most doctors are still recommending it because of the fear of getting a heart attack. Well, the other thing too is with Coumadin, it can also lead to osteoporosis. A lot of people don't don't know that. Mm -hmm. But anybody that's taking a blood thinner, like the aspirin or the Plavix or the um, Pradaxa or the Coumadin, mm -hmm. um, you need to be really careful. Like when you're shaving, because you don't want to cut yourself, <laughs> because you could maybe not stop bleeding. When you had your surgery, they put you in a blood thinner. Yeah, they did. And the day that he came home, <laughs> he <bloody> shaved. <laughs> <laughs> and he got a washcloth to, to wash his, to dry his face, and it was just like full of blood. Well, I was going along with the doctors while I was in the hospital and was accepting the Lovenox, which is another way to cause short-term anticoagulation. But when I got home, I changed all that. And we're going to talk about why I made those changes and why we're not really giving these approaches a fair shake, which means our the patients who are taking these anticoagulants should be on another regimen I think and what we need to do is the research behind it what I'm talking about is we can do things like fish oil and we can use natokinase and we can use lumbrokinase and even ginkgo biloba and we're not going to have the problems that we see with these other drugs that are causing bleeding and we know firsthand that it works because we saw it working a with a live blood cell analysis it's like they do a video when they um, take your blood and you can watch what's going on with the blood. And so they take a drop of blood, they put it in a, in a little bit of saline, then they put a dark field microscope up, use 8,000 power, and track it for an hour or two. And when they look at it, they can see where the blood's clumping together and the platelets are clumping together, or whether there's nice, little, there's nice flow. And fibrin floating around. Yes, and in my own particular case, when I had a problem with coagulation issue, uh, I found clumps of platelets and clumps of red cells everywhere. Not good. And, and when I would take just one or two fish oil or one or two natokinase, an hour later, blood looked like a perfect specimen where there was no clotting whatsoever. So I think that with these issues that we have with aspirin and Plavix and Coumadin and Pradaxa, bleeding is a big deal. Uh, we may be saving some people from having strokes and causing others to have more heart attacks and more GI bleeds, particularly in the case of this new drug, Pradaxa, which causes an, really a irreversible kind of anticoagulation for pr probably about a day. So if you have a stroke and you're on Pradaxa or you're in an auto accident and you're on that drug, chances are you're in real trouble. And when you start combining things like aspirin and Plavix or aspirin and Coumadin, 
you're asking for trouble. Now, the same thing with the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. It gets very complicated and it gets dangerous. Well, you should probably also ask your healthcare practitioner about taking the fish oil and the natokinase along with these other drugs too, because that could be maybe too much, huh? Well, I, I think it is, and, and there's a big concern, particularly with Coumadin. You start adding uh, drugs to that or adding supplements to that, it's a problem. I think we need to do some studies out of the National Institutes of Health because you're never going to find a pharmaceutical company doing these studies on natural uh, substances like the lumbrokinase and natokinase and fish oil because it's not financially to their advantage. Well, but our government should do that so we get the kinds of studies we need to be sure. The preliminary evidence we have when we look at a live blood cell analysis is just that, preliminary evidence. But we also have some doctors who have been doing this for 15, 20, 30 years and their anecdotal reports to us after treating thousands of patients is that there are no complications that they've seen from fish oil, lumbar kinase, or natto kinase. You know, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting is that many mainstream doctors don't prescribe their patients to take the, the fish oil and the natto kinase. They don't know anything about it. So, yes, but they do because when you have surgery, they always ask the patients if they're taking any of these supplements and they ask the patients to stop taking Well, them. that's a formality that's playing CYA. Basically, they're covering their backside because if they don't ask those questions and there is a bleeding problem at surgery, you can bet that it's going to be blamed that, on that and that doctor will be in trouble. But isn't that admitting that they know that it can thin your blood? Uh, not really. What they're saying is that they're afraid that it may have some kind of effect that they cannot measure the, the quantity of that could be an issue and nobody wants to get sued. That's Any, what that's anyway, about. we're giving you this information, but don't mess around with it on your own. You need to have somebody guide you through it. Exactly. Yeah. So when we're looking at anticoagulation, the field is a mess. And most people don't know whether to take aspirin, Plavix, Coumadin, Pradaxa, or what. And my position is, is we need to do the studies to find out what the natural things do. Try to get away from these drugs, all of which that I've mentioned have terrible side effects in some people. And maybe what we'll find is that we'll be able to use things that are safe and effective that don't cost that much money and maybe what you'd like to take if you had a problem that needed protecting from a stroke.